We have five days to complete a bucket list hike that most people do in 10. We have three months to train for it. Let's see if we can pull it off. Here comes him, catch a cow. <laughs> it's legit snowing right now and it's August. Welcome to stage four of the Hardline Challenge. This is really where the rubber hit the road. We are gonna fast pack 65 miles in just two and a half days. And we're doing it at elevation, totally self-supported. This is really where limits were tested from being exposed to thunderstorms, sickness, and even some lovely angry landowners. Here we were trying to cover over 20 miles a day to prepare ourselves for our bucket list hike. Like you, we feel like it can be really tough to get out there on the trail. Our bucket list hike was the Uena Highline Trail, which is over 100 miles long at high elevation. So we are preparing ourselves both mentally and physically to do that trail in half the time that most backpackers do. This Tusher Mountain trip was our last stepping stone before we headed into the Uinta Wilderness. If you wanna know what it took for our team members to even be allowed to come on this trip, make sure to click the link up here to check out that playlist. So who made it? We're just gonna have to find out in this episode of the Hardline Challenge. This is a route that we put together ourselves. Highway 20 goes to Bryce Canyon and then I-70 goes out towards Moab and Canyonlands. We've never seen anyone connect the two highways by going through the Tusher Mountains. We'll get a lot of um, insight about what we like and don't like um, for upcoming products. This is gonna be a 60 plus mile hike in about three days. There's some pretty high elevation mountains, so we'll be going up a lot, we're going back down a lot, back up. So all of the other stages so far have been training for this stage and the next. This will be kind of the fastest long trip that I've ever done in my life. So I think just even the even the fact of just like finishing it and having a good time would be would be the dream. So and not to get too wet. It's gonna be rainy. We know that for sure. Most of us would have cowboy camped on this trip for the sake of saving weight, but we've actually all opted to bring tents or bivvies of some sort to keep us safer. When, when I ran a half marathon um, a few years ago, they gave us all like these race packets, right? And there's this little, there's like a little metal container with like a little bit of a shaving, like Uber gel and yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. So one of my buddies, he got one of those packets and he thought it was chapstick. <laughs> <laughs> so he's putting it all over his lips. Taking a top quilt, 30 degree top quilt. I'm taking a prototype trekking pole tent that's super light. Um, I'm running with trekking poles and obviously running with the fast pack. You're not doing this with a typical uh, hiking backpack. You're doing this with a fast pack, which is kind of more like a vest of, uh, with a little bit more capacity. I've repackaged some of my freeze dried meals, you know, put them in Ziplocs, just anything I could to save a little bit of space. My concerns are just, you know, clothing, shelters, just making sure that we can stay as dry as possible when we need to. I'm imagining a lot of type two type fun, you know, where type one is it's fun during the moment, type two is it's really miserable at the time, but you look back and it's it's fun afterwards. We were all um, just a little bit nervous in anticipation for how long the day was going to be. I have to step over here. <laughs> Can't do that one. Those peaks. You're like, I've been there. Over here, over there. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting there today but we will be there tomorrow. There's mine with two liters of water and full food. This is something that no one had done before to our knowledge. We were gonna be the first ones to through hike, or through run, I guess, um, all the way through the Tusher Mountain Range. 18.9. Woo! That was kind of like our low elevation day where we had to cover a lot of ground. So we leave the truck, we're running down the road, and we get about a half marathon of almost straight running because of how even it is. Dirt roads, two track roads, there's no one out there. We're there in the middle of the week. And then we get to a point where we're about to start heading uphill and we stop. We take lunch break. I think that everyone was feeling like they needed to get a lot more water and a lot more food in them because the worst climbing was yet to come. Well, everyone's giving me crap because I have the lightest pack at 18 and a half pounds or something. And uh, I think I just realized I did forget my spoon. I don't know if it was a two pound spoon, but it does suck to not have a spoon out here. <laughs> after we got started uphill, we started running right after. Um, you know, Brennan specifically, he's had some uh, knee surgeries. And to go from our lunch break to hiking right after that um, was really bothering. 
I don't think Brennan was used to running quite that much. His training had involved a lot more of just weighted pack hiking and I don't think he was realizing how much running we were doing in our training, being removed from the team. Just hit mile 16 and uh, we're in the big climb portion of the day. Good to know that we've done over a half marathon so far with another one that we're working on. So yeah. a full marathon by the time we're done. <laughs> we got into this really steep stuff where we went just straight up. That's where I think I pushed my body past its limits and I think I ended up paying for that later on. But I kept going, um, even pushed the guys to kind of run and, and keep pushing hard. How do you lead Brennan so we don't, so we know your pace, huh? We, uh, yeah. I just feel bad. I just don't want to slow you guys down because I, I don't feel like, like the mileage, like, like I've done that. I just know you have to run it Yeah. Mile 20. High chews and never ending climbs. A lot of mud. And raisins. Once we got to our highest point in the day, we had to drop down and go past this, this little lake. The lake is a public access lake, but we encountered a point where we hit a fence. So we were walking along this uh, forest service fence, right? The log ones they cut. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. They've, someone's put logs in front of this gate looking thing, but maybe that's not it. That's to say to go up here. We go up there and I look at the map. I'm like, no, 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 that was this. We go back. And sure enough, the forest service had a gate open, right? And someone had just stacked some little logs in there. Taysen's leg cramped extremely um, bad, like right as we were trying to decide if we were gonna go through the fence. And uh, so he was like standing there screaming and I, I don't know why I didn't film it, but it was hilarious. Like while he was screaming because of this cramp in his thigh, he was like undoing this makeshift gate that someone had put on the fence. May or may not got a cramp and said some words Derek has never heard before when I was throwing those logs out of the way. Um, but needless to say, we go in and we, we go down and cross and we cross another really nice gate and I'm like, why did that guy do that? I mean, he had a no hunting sign right next to it too. So you know he's like, just wants people to not hunt on his land. That's kind of a big thing in Utah too. We're crossing it and sure enough, this this razor uh, comes pulling out into the, and I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> like, game on. More aggressively than just like a friendly hello, but it wasn't like, he wasn't like yelling at us. Ends up saying, hey, yeah, this is my property and no, there's not a trail here, and no, you can't come through here. Taysen, having come off of his cramp and us making fun of him and everything, he was a little more edgy than normal as well. So they kind of got into this discussion about what was legal and where the access was, and if it wasn't legal for us to be there, why would it be on the maps still? Because we were using updated maps and everything. Did you close the gate? I turned around and said, yeah, that gate, we closed that gate. No, 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 my other gate. What other gate? The the log gate. No, we didn't close the logs that aren't supposed to be there on the on the trail that's you know passing through. He's like, no, no, that's my gate. You need to close the gate. You need to go back there and close it. I'm, I'm not gonna go close your gate, dude. It's not even supposed to be there. Well, you can't be on my land. We're on a designated trail that passes through your land, and it, and as far as I understand the laws, totally legal. That trail existed before. It's a forest service trail. It passes through your land. Yeah, we can't get off your trail. You know, we're gonna be as respectful as we can. We'd never litter or do anything like that, but the trail cuts through your property. And uh, anyways, we went around in circles for, I don't know, 15 minutes. Um, at some point I just was like, dude, whatever. He calmed down at some point as well. And he wasn't happy that the cows were gonna get into his land. And he was really just mad that we didn't close the gate. But we went on down through and it was only another couple miles to camp. We are sitting at 26.6 miles. How you guys feeling? I'm ready to camp. <laughs> what was our elevation, did you say, roughly? Uh, That's what I'm feeling. 5,800 5, of ascent. Ascent. Was that? Yeah, I'm ready to put the feet up for a minute. My legs are tired are and my head hurts. But other than that, doing pretty good. I'm feeling pretty oh, good, gosh. just struggling with some pretty bad knee pain on my left side, but other than that, we're, we're golden. We didn't even plan to find a bench in the middle of the backcountry, but we did, and I like it's it. awesome. Some dude, I guess, uh, stayed there, 
consistently go up there and camp and hunt out of this camp for a long time. Had a little plaque and some benches built and ended up being a really nice campsite. In memory of George Bird, a man who roamed and hunted these mountains for a lifetime, a superb horseman and rifleman, a teller of fine stories around the campfire, a buck hunter, missed by his loved ones and hunting companions. This was his favorite campsite on the old Indian campground at Iant Creek. Yeah, ate food, hung out, went to bed, and as uh, kind of dozed off, and then about 10 o'clock at night, I woke up just feeling sick. Like, I thought I was gonna throw up, I just fought it off. Then I got a, about a three hour window of sleep maybe, and uh, I heard a, a bear outside my tent, and I started to kind of get nervous. I don't remember, I might have yelled at it a little bit or something. And next thing I know, the bear grabs my tent and starts dragging it out of the camp. And I'm in the tent still, so I'm yelling and, you know, trying to yell. I'm trying as hard as I can to yell at this bear and kick and scream, and I, I, like, got, I finally got this yell out, and that's when I woke up. Holy cow, I'm pretty sure I just like yelled out loud. So I wait to hear if anyone gets out of their tent to come save me because I just screamed in the night, and uh, yeah, no one gets up. So basically I would die if a bear really came into camp, but Darren in the morning was asking, if Brigham got attacked by a bear. Yeah, I thought I heard someone yell. I'm like, thanks for coming to my rescue, dude. I could have been getting eaten by a bear and you just roll over and go back to sleep. All right, here we go on day two. Just leaving our gorgeous campsite behind. It's been super wet. Everything's soaking wet. We were rained on all day yesterday. And, but I think spirits are still high. I was dealing with cramps and stomach issues throughout the night. Brennan's knees still bothering him, but uh, this is gonna be, <laughs> I think that's the hardest part so far of this fast pack is waking up and knowing it's time to go do it again. So, let's see how we fare. Again, we tried to get an early start, try and get cover some ground in the nice cool temperatures before the sun hits. And, um, it was nice, clear skies. Uh, right off the bat, we had to gain some more elevation, so it was just kind of like a, an uphill pull for a couple miles. We're going up past that peak right there today. Sure looks, sure looks like a long ways away. We knew it was gonna start storming later in the day. So we wanted to cover as much ground as we needed before it started raining again. The second day is when we actually started a trail that was called uh, the Skyline Trail, if I remember right. And that was right, like it sounds like, going right over the Beaver Mountain skyline. So at the water hole, I took the cap off of these and I poured my water in here mm. to here. And I filled a little too much. So I poured it back in the bottle uh, and oh, drank it. Oh, back contaminated so it. So maybe about a tablespoon of water, not filtered. Yeah. Oh. Well. I guess I'll find out next week on vacation. I'm feeling like I'm at a calorie wall and my stomach just keeps churning. At that point, it was pretty apparent that uh, Tayson and Brennan were not wanting to go the same pace that the rest of us were going. So we've split up into two groups. Um, Tayson and Brennan are behind us. Um, Tyler Brigham and Darren and myself are ahead a little ways. We wouldn't have done that if we didn't have two Garmin inreaches that we could communicate back and forth from group to group and know exact locations of the groups. Tayson looked pretty sick and just felt super sick the entire day fighting off throwing up just constantly and Brandon was like you know just just eat like one fruit snack at a time you know and I'm like all right because I mean I've never eaten one fruit snack in my life it's it's like pack or two packs or three packs what do you mean one fruit snacks so that worked I kind of got into a groove we had a lot more elevation to climb and I was able to 
milk that all the way through the rest of the day and even had to do a little bit of running when some lightning came through as well. Started hearing some rumbles off in the distance and the wind and you could see the, you know, the clouds coming from opposite directions running into each other so you kind of knew what was coming and you you could almost smell the the friction in the air you know literally the the, the friction of the, the clouds converging and the electricity building up lightning struck just a few hundred yards away from us. It was really loud. I just like hunkered down, but I looked forward and Brigham was like way down off the trail. It caused me to like, you know, kind of lunge for cover. I don't know if he had fallen or stumbled, but he was like way down and Derek was just gone. Like he just bolted. Running down the trail faster than any of us could really possibly do on this trail. Derek zipped out of there. He was probably the smartest of us trying to get out of that weather. Didn't want to get struck by lightning. And, and I look back at Darren and he's like, I guess let's go. And so we all just started like sprinting uh, down these bare mountainsides. You scared the heck out of me, man. Like I took off, <laughs> left these guys in the dust. <laughs> we were sprinting. <laughs> that was our top speed for the trip for sure. I did not want to be in that spot any longer. So lunchtime, storm started rolling in. Uh, I think Darren called it. It's two o'clock, exactly when Darren said it was gonna rain. And now we got the rain gear on. We had so many miles, it was really hard to like stop and wait it out. So I think for the most part, we just kept trying to push through. And if we'd see lightning, we'd try to hunker down. And I think that's what happened with both parties. Group number two here, coming in at the back. There we go. Try not to get struck by lightning. The scary part is once we climb this hill, Brennan, we're in the wide open. Yep. <laughs> going, going across this next patch. The wind was blowing, so we were just soaked and running and stopped a couple times to get water. But the rain didn't really let up for a few hours. Look at this awesome little valley. When we were running through all this high elevation um, land above tree line, and there's lightning and rain and hail, we passed like two old people and, and they were just cruising along and they were actually running as well, but the opposite direction that we were going. Stay safe. I was impressed. They didn't seem bothered at all. They actually, as they as they passed us, were like, hey, you you guys be careful. Like, what about you guys? <laughs> we found a descriptor of uh, my dear wife. Oh, Brigham's gonna catch a cow. We were about five miles from camp and we had to go over the very highest point on our route. We were soaked, but we put on some rain jackets anyway to just block the wind and not get further soaked. We're at about 18 and a half miles for today. And uh, we are cold and wet. Just one of those where we gotta keep pushing keep warm and get over this ridge and start dropping some elevation so we can feel a little better about the storm and the lightning. It was cold. I mean, it's a good thing we were exerting ourselves and yeah, it was really pretty. You know, it had a good mix of clouds, fog, mist, um, just the green bouncing off the mountain, you know, contrasting to the, the darkness of the clouds and the rain. It was just really beautiful and just awesome to be there. Here goes the rest of the crew. I think we made a little ground on them. We're just about to the top and the rain is calming down. So that'll be good when we're the very, very most exposed. It'll be a little bit less out of the rain. About 11,500 feet. That last couple miles up above Mud Lake was pretty miserable. No one was having any fun at that point. Once my tent was set up, I knew that once I went in there, I wasn't gonna be coming back out. I was just gonna try to eat. And so I went to go find some water and it took me longer to filter the water than I thought. I stand up to walk back to camp and my teeth are just chattering. And I realized like, holy cow, I am freezing right now. And I can tell I'm not thinking as clearly as usual and it was one of those scenarios where I like kind of woke up and was like, holy cow, if I didn't have my tent set up, if I didn't have my, my quilt laid out and stuff like that, this could be a really bad scenario. Um, and just shows you how quickly something like weather, something like rain can just zap the heat out of you. I didn't have any fear because I knew I was 
had a couple hundred yards to get back to camp and just get all of my wet clothes off and get in a, in a dry top quilt. But uh, it was kind of shocking. I mean, I could not stop my teeth from chattering. It, it got, it was cold, especially being wet. But. 6 a.m., day three. We're uh, getting ready to hit the trail again for this last stretch. I think we have around 15 miles. And the worst part is we're putting on muddy, wet, wet shoes. These still a little sore, but I, I feel good. Probably slept for like 10 hours last night. I was in the bivy from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So 12 hours in a bivy bag can get a little claustrophobic at times, but Criminal Minds definitely helps with that. So I recommend bringing like an audiobook or something to listen to. Brigham's still asleep. Tayson's still asleep. Darren thinks his tent's gonna dry out. What'd you say? I said, don't wake me up. <laughs> don't wake you up. I haven't stood up yet, but just put on my wet shorts. That wasn't very pleasant. <laughs> oh yeah. Nice. It's kind of nice the last day, the morning of the last day. You're not as worried about, I mean, I should always be worried, but I wasn't personally as worried about moisture in my gear as on the other days. Cause I'm like, well, I don't have to sleep in it tonight. So if it's raining while I'm packing things away, I'm just going to pack it away. I'm going to run out of here and I'm going to go to get a burger and I'll dry it out of my house later. It was a nice brisk morning. Pretty good for running. As soon as we got running and hiking, we weren't cold. So that wasn't a big deal. Honestly, there's a, there's a small hope in my mind I was gonna wake up and feel normal. Um, wasn't the case, and so at that point it's just like, all right, do everything you can to limit the damage and get through this. We had a little a little connector section of road, and then we hit a trail called the Pipeline Trail, as if we didn't have enough trails named with the word line in it. There's two or three of the guys in front of me, and they're taking off down this trail that we had already been on. And I passed this sign with an arrow pointing down off where the other guys were already headed. And I'm like, hey, I yell at them. Hey, stop, wait a minute. Shouldn't we follow the trail? And I was like, I'm on the trail. What are you talking about? This is a way bigger trail than whatever you're pointing at. And sure enough, we go back up there. I'd, I'd lost the trail. So it was kind of comical because the entire time I had been harassing Tyler about his GPS. Anytime he opened up his iPhone, it seemed to have this delay. And so he's like, oh, it's over here. And I'm like, no, 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 it's over this way. What are you talking about? No, 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 it's this way. And he wouldn't admit to it, but there was definitely a delay when he was using his GPS versus mine. And so when they first called back, I'm like, Tyler, yet again, you're wrong. Oh, wait, no, I'm wrong. Dang it. <laughs> I'm just going to turn my audio book off. How are you feeling, Brigham? You got some tingle? Yeah, it's weird. My arms and my face are tingling. Brigham's like face and arms and hands kind of went numb. That's not something I've ever experienced outside, outside of anesthesia at a dentist. It was really weird. I, I was just trying to run through all these, these boxes to check in my mind of, is it this, is it this? No, it was all no's. It was all, nothing is adding up. It, this is all different than anything I've ever experienced. I also didn't eat anything that morning. I just got out, got packed and hit the trail. So. Um, I kind of attributed it to that. We think it was because he just got a little too too far into the calorie deficit, but uh, it seemed to go away partway through the day. I'm hoping, after all this hiking, I can take the title of Colossal Calves. Colossal oh, Calves. Go. Yeah. No hope for thunder calves. thighs, but maybe calves. Colossal Calves. No, no, no. Derek, or Darren already named you. He said yesterday when that lightning struck, you guys looked around and, and he's like, man, Derek was a little jackrabbit. He was gone. <laughs> so I think he's trailing the jackrabbit. So that right up where that stump is up there is where this spring comes out of the mountain. And look at how much water comes out of a single hole in the mountain. It's amazing. And we found a hideout. We were now in a section of, of, of a burn area that had previously had a forest fire. There's some, nice. some marble-sized hail that we must have just missed. Oh, good thing we didn't get hit by that. Burnt that big old 100 plus foot pine trees tipped over, <laughs> blocking the trail everywhere. These ones smell like mint, but they're not mint. We were almost out of the burn section and we find this heaven, basically. Is it good? Wild mint. 
I prefer some gum. Coming in and out of those canyons, there's a lot of water, there's a lot of vegetation, and we stumbled upon like giant raspberry patches right off the trail. Oh, I dropped it. Oh, no. Good as new. Yes. I love some wild berries. Like, it's just like this awesome surprise that you pay for raspberries by the pound, you know, you pay for them at the grocery store or at a, at a fresh market or something. And here we are just on this awesome adventure and just have all the raspberries I could eat in a day just at my disposal. That pipeline trail was really beautiful. The last section of this of this trail was actually going to be an old road, kind of a, a four-wheeler road. And we get to this road, and that's the point. I'm like, okay, now we're hitting roads. Now this is going to be easy cruising all the way out. Mile 13. Cool old mining operation. Well, I think we almost made it without getting dumped on, but then just a few minutes ago, it started to rain a lot, and. We had to pull out the rain jacket because it was raining hard. The the best the best part of it though is you know as we got closer to the end you know we could see I seventy you know that was our finish line and right there you get a whole lot more energy just when you're trying to finish that up. Look at that, that's I seventy. Definitely just one of those cool experiences where you, you you finish and you're just like holy crap I did it you know all the things that went that happened during that whole trail from from planning to all the hardships on the trail and everything we worked through. Um, was a really cool experience to, to finish it. I would say that's the finish line. Clear. Woo. Good work. It echoes good up here. Echo! Woo! All right, we made it. We have to add it up for sure, but right around 61, 62 miles. This was our end point right above us. Um, it was a learning experience. We all learned a lot. But uh, glad we did it. I feel really good. Honestly, me and Darren were actually just talking about it. For people that just did 61, 62 miles, like my energy levels are off the charts. Like I feel great. I don't know if it's just a high from the trip, but it's just, it just goes to show like when you kind of push yourselves to the limits, like really what your body's capable of. So I enjoyed every second of it. All right, man. How was it? Would you do it again? Um. <laughs> Questionable, <laughs> questionable, but it was a good experience. I'm a little sore, like certain areas of the body, like groin area and whatnot. It's like, but all in all, I have a lot of energy still. And I feel like I could go further, but I thought that was a good run. I, thought I liked it all. There were some times when the rain would die down. Yesterday, when we were right there at the tree line, to where it's like little dwarf trees, you know, and. Uh, Everything up above is just really green and misty and then down below is just forest and that was really cool. I think that was one of my favorite trips so far that we've done as far as for like backpacking trips, um, through hiking anywhere. That was a lot of fun. Uh, the bottom of my feet hurt, but that was definitely an awesome trip. Fast packing actually isn't as miserable or hard as it sounds if you're not a runner. Um, obviously we trained a lot over the summer, but when it came down to doing it, we enjoyed ourselves. Like we covered a lot of ground, which was cool to push ourselves and cover more ground than we had previously. And uh, it really wasn't that uncomfortable because we were quite prepared. What that trip was all about, or what, what, what fast packing really does is it creates the best and most optimal way to train not just for fast packing, but also for hiking. You're stressing your ankles, you're stressing your knees, you're working all those muscles, you're condensing your workout times, because um, it's not easy to go hike eight miles in a day, but if you can log the same amount of miles in two hours by running them, um, it's still just a fantastic way to prepare yourself to cover miles. And going into the Uena Highline Trail, we knew we were gonna be covering 20 plus miles a day um, hiking, which probably meant, you know, obviously your, your joints and everything have to be dialed, your muscles have to be able to handle it, um, but it also is probably gonna mean longer days, you know, starting earlier, ending later, because you don't have the elements of running to try to make up a little bit of miles and times. Uh, not to say that maybe we didn't end up running a little bit, but um, 
The idea was to be hiking it and covering 20 plus miles a day and having our bodies in tip top shape to handle that kind of mileage at over 10,000 feet. You guys see that? It's rained pretty literally all night long. And when I was up there last, I just remember looking at it and thinking, that is so steep. I threw up like four times. It's legit snowing right now and it's August. 